Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together and running over. Then you have leaders in developing countries who want to take, 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 take. Your citizens can fund your most ambitious projects. Nigerians can raise money for the Nigerian government much more than we can get at IMF. But you must first give to the people. A leader who puts his people first. Don't just come and tell them to give. So what our leaders do is on the first day of assuming office, they raise the idea, they want to tax everybody to them. You have not even given them anything. Nothing. You don't care about the businesses. You want to raise IGR. You don't care about the economy. You want to raise IGR. You don't want to talk to the marketers. What can I do for you? They say we need roads. You build for them. We need this policy. Change it. Customs is against us. Change. What do you, how can I help you do it better? You made 10 million last month. How can I increase it to 50? Through government policies. And you do the government policies that will deliver prosperity to the people. And you can now turn back and say, we need to build an airport. This is why we need an airport. We need to build a railway. This is why we need a railway. We need to do this. This is why we need to do it. Who can give us crowdfunding? Today we're discussing mountain top. Moses the man, the vision and the provision. So yesterday we proposed to reflect on outward appearance, how to fund your vision. But in the course of preparing for the class, it got expanded, and now we're looking at the topic mountain top. Moses the man, the vision and the provision how to fund your most ambitious projects. Today, we will be talking majorly about state capacity, about leaders funding their projects. But whatever we say, you can take that exact thing and apply it to your personal life, apply it to your family, apply it to your business, apply it to your corporate goals, apply it to your societal goals, and you will see it work. But before we get onto that, because we have said we will talk about um, how men see outward appearance, so let us consider one scripture. And if you have your Bible, let's go to First Samuel chapter sixteen, verse seven. I'm reading from New King James Version, First Samuel chapter sixteen, verse seven. But the Lord said to Samuel. Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I read it again this time slowly. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Anytime you want to understand a product, the best person to ask is the manufacturer. Anytime you're dealing with a product, say a mobile phone, say a television, say a refrigerator, say a car, there is something called owner's manual. That owner's manual is given to you as the owner, but actually it is the manufacturer's manual, right? Because it is the manufacturer who knew what he put there, who knows what he put there, and the design. And the manufacturer knows the product much more than the buyer. But you know what? We Africans, we tend not to read we just buy it and assume that we know and flip it open and continue to do trial and error. That's why sometimes um, you use a phone for four years, three years, and you don't even know the full capacity of the phone. There are those things in the phone that the phone is loaded with that you don't have um, access to or that you're not even bothered to check out because you just, let's, let's, let's use guesswork uh, to see what's in there 
or I've used a phone before so I, I, I can assume to a fair degree of accuracy what this one is going to do. But we're saying that if you're going to do business with men, it's important that we pay attention to what man's manufacturer says about him. It is the world of men. Why is this study of man important? Some people call it psychology, others call it a honor of names, and all of them are valid. Why is it important to study how man behaves? Because you're going to be doing business with man. A lot of your most significant ambitions, a lot of your most significant projects are going to be done with or in partnership with others. If you, for instance, have a goal to sell 10 units of your product, now you're going to be dealing with men, you're going to be dealing with buyers, you're going to be dealing with, for instance, middlemen, you're going to be dealing with, for instance, tax officials, you're going to be dealing with uh, importers, you're going to be dealing with um, career service providers. So at each and every touch point of that transaction, men, and then you need to understand what the manufacturer of those men say about them. And if you glean that wisdom, it will help you a lot in your navigation around those transactions. You can say the same thing about family. You can say the same thing about your co-workers. But for those of us at local school, especially those who have governance goals, your most daring governance goals are going to be done in partnership with others. You need staff if you're building a company. You need employees. You need people to believe in the vision. You need people to fund the vision. You need people to donate to the vision. You need people to volunteer for the vision. And so if you're doing business with men, it's important to pay attention to what man's creator says about him. I want to give us one quote that unlocks the scriptures. You see, um, anytime you're reading the scriptures, Pay attention to what God is saying. Now, the whole scripture is important, but pay special attention to what God is saying. So anytime that there is a conversation in the Bible, and the conversation is between God and man, pay attention to what God is saying. It's a very important quote. When God is speaking with Moses, don't read it as, oh, both of them are having a conversation. If that was how you used to read it before, now there is a new key that unlocks the scripture. Pay attention to what God is saying. After you've done that, also pay attention to what is being said to God. If there is a dialogue, pay attention to what the man that is speaking with God is saying to him. For instance, in one of Moses' conversations with God when he was frustrated, was telling God, what did I do wrong that you tell me to carry these men on the back like I'm carrying my own child and deliver them to the promised land? Now, if you've read Bible from Genesis to that point, the Bible did not record where Moses, where God was telling Moses that thing. But if he was telling God something, it means that God told him a lot of things that were not written in the scriptures. And therefore, it is only in such private conversations when they are recorded that you may learn or glean wisdom from some of the interactions that happened between God and that man. So we've said one of the quotes that unlock the scriptures is one, what God is saying and what is being said to God. Many people don't read the Bible because they don't know how important it is. They've not seen how important it is to the realization of their full potential. So they carry on with life, trudging on with life, doing trial and error on things that they can learn wisdom from. The scriptures. If, for instance, the Bible says that the heart of man is desperately wicked, you can read it from the scriptures and apply yourself appropriately, or you can find out after they've served you breakfast, according to Nigeria's street language. But that's not the only thing the Bible talks about the man's heart. Today, the Bible is telling us in a, a scripture, don't look at the at his appearance. Don't. Don't look at his physical stature because I have refused him. Now he tells you something that is defining. He tells you something that is a law. He says, for man looks at the outward appearance. 
If it is man, he looks at the outward appearance. There are lots of people who say, but I'm a good person, I'm a nice person, I, I, I have good hearts, you need to come close to me before you... Okay, man, look at the outward appearance. When I was doing network marketing, I think that was maybe 18 or 19 years of age, so we, we saved up a little money and we got, me and my associates, we got suits. We went to a very nice tailor and he got me just a pair of suits. And I noticed that any day that I'm wearing those pair of suits, because I drive from my city in Newey to Onicha on a daily basis, and before you get out from Newey to Onicha during those days, you meet about five to six police checkpoints. Like from my house on a very good day to where we're going to, we meet between five, on a normal day we meet three or four, but usually five to six police checkpoints. And so each of the places we see them, they stop you, where is your paper, where is this, where is that. But any day I put on that suit, they I say, ah, where did they go? They go, they go. The same person, when they see me wearing t-shirt and jeans tomorrow, they will stop me and where is your driver's license? Say no wonder man sees according to the outward appearance. And if young people will understand this, many of the problems will be needless. A normal police officer does not have the time to start looking critically at everybody he sees on the road. So what he does is that he profiles people. So if he sees you wearing some kind of clothes, some kind of hairstyle and some kind of you're walking some kind of way now he doesn't have the time or spiritual capacity to start investigating he immediately assumes that you are this kind of person man see you may be a very good person but from the way you are dressed now if they read a community there are people they won't touch and i found out that by men altering the way you appear outwardly a lot of the things you do with men will be receiving much more easier attention by just slightly altering your appearance because if they are men, they look at the outward appearance. Now, today is not the day to talk about the heart, how the Lord sees. We are looking at how man sees. And how man sees, it is the person that created man that is giving us expo. And telling us, this is who I created, and this is how he judges things. He looks at one appearance. He looks at physical stature. He looks at the outward appearance. That's why we need branding. That's why we don't just wear any clothes we like. There are people, you, once you see them, once people see you, it is man. And you know that you're a very good person. But when they see you with this kind of clothes, with this kind of hairstyle, they write you off come. They won't even give you a benefit of a doubt. Now you say, but uh, now, for instance, I was telling my colleagues, if you've not achieved Mark Zuckerberg's kind of success, don't go dressing like him. Because I see very young people, they are starting out in life, they have, you know, or another example, apart from Mark Zuckerberg, there is one guy in Nigeria, I think the owner of, um, is it Flutterwave? The young guys running from flutter with very cool guys in the cool sense of the word for Gen Z's. Right? And you see them, they paint their nails, you know, paint their nails blue, green, have some kind of weird looks, paints, have lipsticks and lip glosses. And they can walk in and out of meetings. And then a young person who does not have 1,000 in his account. Is approaching a business investor to invest his, in his vision. And you dress that way. By the time you walk into the meeting, they have closed on you. They have taken a decision. Now, out of court, they may decide to listen. Man looks at the outward appearance. A time may come when you have achieved some kind of success that now your glory can cover, your influence level. Can determine now you are at liberty to dress the way you like, you are at liberty to say what you like. But at the elementary stage where we are trying to take off, we must tweak our ways. Sometimes you may have to change your haircut. 
Don't say, I like this. This is the trending haircut. Does it support your vision? If you are positioning yourself to be a strategic investor, don't be wearing dreadlocks. If you're going to ask people to give you their money and they see dreadlocks on you, what they are going to be thinking, ah, this guy will run away with my money. By just dressing and pretending as if you are credible, we know you are credible. You see, outward appearance, outward appearance. Branding, a good product must be in a good container. For women, it is important. I know you like dressing the way you like your artistic liberty, you like your freedom, you like the way you think, you speak anyway, you talk your mind. Now this is how I like it. This is how I'm trained. I'm a free-minded person. I say it the way I see it. If you offend me, I slap you. If you be, you know, I um, I don't send anybody. Brand up, brand up, brand up. We know that you're a good person, but your branding suggests otherwise. And people will not have the time to give you the benefit of the doubt to see that, you know, they look at their outward appearance, they are men, they are not God. Now, the only kind of men that will give you the God kind of look is the men that have the deposits of God in them. Now, the only kind of men that will look at you the way God looks at you is men that are totally submitted to God. That even Samuel, a man of God, was at this, like, this time of his life, he was not wearing the, his godly binoculars. He was using the physical eyes to judge a matter. It was only when God gave him a new set of eyes that he looked at David and anointed David. There are lots of thoughts. We are the ones that are supposed to carry the anointing. But because we didn't look like it, the oil was poured on someone. We went to an interview. You didn't dress well, you didn't, you did all, they will just skip you up. I was interviewing a young girl for a role, and there was, this was years ago when I was sitting on the board of the interview panel. And after we have done the shortlist, we shortlisted only two candidates. And we've done aptitude tests, everything, we just, when we have only one role. And we're like, well, how can we solve this? One person is more, the, the younger person is everywhere, is more tech savvy. It's more situated for the position. We had a board of three. I would have to fill that vacancy for a hospital, a very big hospital in the southeast. And then when we, we didn't even know what to do again. Everything checked off, the other one. And then as they were coming in for the last round, the two of them were invited again. They came, just looked at the way one comported herself, dressed like someone going to interview. You coordinated. You that one was just walking anyhow, talking anyhow, but very gifted, talented. And the interview panel said, look, um, let's take the other one. Although the other one that is younger beats this one in aptitude test, in skill test, practicals, did more than better. But in coordination, the way she presents, and this good person looks like, let's just take this one that looks like a professional. And she left. Probably you said that job was not meant for her. Maybe it was not. But also maybe if she had coordinated herself better, she would have gotten a role she was clearly qualified for. Outward appearance. Outward appearance. Outward appearance. Now let us read the scripture for the day. Exodus chapter 31, 1 to 11. Then the Lord said to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Paul, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cotton jewels for certain, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. And indeed, I have appointed with him Aholiah, the son of Ahimasak, of the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the heart of all the gifted artisans, that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tabernacle of the meeting, the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is on it, 
and all the furniture with that knuckle, and the table and its utensils, the pure good lifestyle, with all its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offerings, with all its utensils, the lava and its base, the garments of ministry, the holy garments of Aaron, the priests and the garments of his sons as ministers, and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded you, they shall do. John 2, Exodus 35, 4 to 10. And Moses said to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing the Lord has commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord, gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen and goose hair, rams dyed skins, badger skins, and acacia wood oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, honey stones and stones to be set in the effort and in the breastplate. All who are gifted at sense among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. Now the final scriptures, Exodus 36, 1 to 7. And Bezalel and Aholia and every gifted artisan in whom the Lord has put wisdom and understanding to know how to do all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary shall do according to all that the Lord has commanded. Then Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab, and every gifted artisan in whose heart the Lord has put wisdom, everyone whose heart was stirred, to come and do the work. And they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. So they continued to bring to him free will offerings every morning. Then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from the work he was doing. And they spoke to Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work of the Lord. So Moses gave a commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing, for the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done. Indeed, too much. We are studying the world of nations. There are three funding models that you see that is prevalent within our government cycle today. Number one, borrowing. And Nigeria has borrowed and continued to borrow. You know the statistics. Number two, taxation. And Nigeria has taxed and continued to tax businesses to death. Number three is what they call PPP model, public-private partnership. And today we are beginning to study Moses on the mountaintop, Moses the man, Moses the vision, and Moses the provision. You see, Moses went on the top of the mountain to interact with a deity and he came down with a vision. God told him, build me this, build me tabernacle, build me this, it must be gold, it must be silver, this is the dimension, this is that, this is the other. But God did not leave him alone. And you have to ask yourself, where do our leaders get their vision from? This vision to build this mega project, the other mega project, this, that, the other thing. But where do they get it from? And that is the first source of provision because whoever gave you the vision should be responsible for the provision. If you got the vision from God, He is responsible for providing, He can give you templates. If you got the idea from Facebook, well, Facebook will fund it. If you got the idea from another place, that place should fund it. Because the author of the vision should be the finisher also. Whoever gives you the vision should make provisions for it. But you see, when God gave this man a vision, especially according to the last place we read, it was him. These guys did not go to the mountaintop with him. So many times the leader and his vision is quite distinct from the people. Quite distinct. And this is a leadership training. Not all the people will go where you go to. Not all the people will ascend to the realms you ascend to. 
Not all the people will speak at the frequency you speak. Not all the people will pick up the kind of energy, the kind of faith, the kind of resilience, the kind of glory, the kind of honor, the kind of um, might, the kind of riches. The seven things we discussed that you need to have. Not everybody can have, or at least if indeed everybody can, not everybody has developed themselves to that point. That's why you're now the leader. But the thing is this, that Moses goes to speak with a deity, and the deity tells him, do this, do that, do that for me. And he sent him down. But before he sent him down, in, he says, I have called by name, verse 1 of chapter 31, Exodus, those who will help you accomplish this vision. I have, so because I gave you the vision, but you're not a carpenter. I gave you the vision, but you're not a gold worker. I gave you the vision, but you're not an iron spit. I gave you the vision, but you're not a, a goldsmith. I gave you the vision of the tabernacle, what to do, but you're not an, a, an artisan. So I have given you the vision. Yes, you have the vision, but you don't have the technical skills. At least all the technical skills. You need the leadership skills. But you may not have the technical skills to execute. You need men. Men are provisions. So when a government surrounds himself with incompetent men, there's a problem. If you surround yourself with your family members and you do know that they're incompetent, there's a problem. If you surround yourself with people from your ethnic group, from your tribe, from your religion, and you know that they are not qualified, you have started because men are provision. There are two kinds of provision to every vision. Number one is material provision, the gold, the silver, the diamond, the pearls, the stones. Look at this. They were willing to offer, Exodus 35 verse 5, they were willing to offer gold, silver, bronze, blue purple, blue box, scarlet thread, finally gold's hair, ram skin, Badger skins, acacia wood, oil for the light, and spices for the anointing. Because God told him, not only are you going to build me an ark of the tabernacle, you're going to build it according to this specification. You're going to use gold for this place. You're going to use silver here. You're going to use bronze here. You're going to use this. You're going to use that. So those materials, you need them. But that's only half of the equation. If all you've got this morning, you are still poor. If all you've got is money, you're still poor. If I, one of the times, because of the kind of work I've done, I, I, I've sat on boards of interviews, recruiting people, that's part of the consultancy I do, recruiting for companies. And I have now indeed confirmed that Nigeria's problem is not unemployment, it is unemployability. That you have men and women who said that they went to school and you can see their certificates. Now, we don't go around verifying certificates, and especially at the level of interview. Now, when you have gotten the job and the job requires serious verification and vetting, then we might commission some lawyers to do background checks on you and then, you know, start uh, doing all the respects. We don't vet all the certificates for um, in recruits or potential recruits. But you see people who sometimes they have two ones, sometimes they have first class, but they are totally, totally clueless, totally, totally unskilled. And anyone who has run businesses here would know that many times you, you are struggling to give, this is the vision I have, this is the kind of cloth I want, this is the kind of house I want to build, this is the, but, but to find the skilled men that will do that is a problem. A few skilled men, that's why they are highly sought after. It's not everybody that looks for a job. There are people who jobs are, no matter the kind of recession, the company cannot downsize them. Anytime you see anybody say, ah, the, the company downsized and they sacked all of us, they sacked 7,000 of us.
It tells you the story of a man that is not highly valuable. Because that company, except if it's folded, there are people it cannot afford to lose. There are men, men like Oholiab, very gifted men. So the first gift God gives you in support of your vision is men. Skilled men that will translate what you have in mind. God might give you an idea to make a movie, but you're not a video editor. You are not a good actor. You might not even be a good script writer. All you need to do is to sit down with a script writer and tell him what the storyline and then they can begin to write the script. On their own, they may not be able to write the script. But as they are writing, you say, no, this is not what I got. No, this is not my, how I'm inspired. As a matter of fact, the biggest players in the... Um, let me use clothing as an instance. The biggest players in the clothing industry, some of them don't know how to turn around the sewing machine. The biggest, some of your biggest designers can't turn up, they can't cut it, they can't cut clothes. What they do is they go to the mountaintop and they download design inspirations. And they draw the clothes, they draw it. Once they can sketch it, they give it to tell us to reproduce. They didn't give it to people to reproduce. A vision. And you're struggling with it. Maybe part of the struggle is that you don't have men around. And you must have now, therefore, learn how to partner with men. It is arrogance to assume that you don't need men. It's arrogance. It's arrogance, actually. To think that you don't need help. Yes, you might have this entrepreneurial ability in you, but you may need another person to be your financial advisor. You may need another person to do your legals. You may need another person to do your communications and branding. You may need another person. You need men, skilled men. It is wanting to do it alone. Imagine if Moses had come down and wanted to be the artisan, be the seamstress, be the this, be, look at all the work required. Remember, they had to make incense. They have to make perfumes. They have to make the clothing for Aaron. They have to make the outer coat. They have to make all of those things. And that's what we do. We are doing the marketing. We are doing the this. We are doing the that. We are doing the that. And one man army. At the personal level, you see that if you don't have men, you, your vision is going to be limited. Number two, at the corporate level, if you have men, because almost all presidents, governors, senators, they have men. And many times, they populate themselves with men who are not skilled. Why is this? Sometimes due to inferiority complex. They don't like intelligent people around them. They want to be the brightest chap in the room. Guess what? Moses was not the brightest chap in the room. Doesn't even know how to work gold. Doesn't even know how to cut silver. Doesn't even, don't have to, you don't have to know. But you need to know what a well cut gold looks like. So you can tell them, no, this is not the vision I got. This is, it must be according to specification. You may not have to be a good script writer, but you have this vision to make a movie. You talk to the script, this is, no, this is not, the, it's not jelly. There's something about it that I don't like. Okay, give me one more week. Can you remove this line? Can you take out... Versus, oh God, this is normal. Now it's, it's good. It's not good enough. Oh God, this is good. You're telling the panel beta. You're telling the art. Well, this is what I want. This is... You're not, oh God, this is good. You, if you want, you can... No, no, this is what I want. The leader is the ability to insist on that picture in your mind. But you may not be able to physically translate it. So when God gives you a vision, one of the first provisions he makes is a provision of men. But many times, the people we've met at events, the people around us, our friends, our days, um, we don't want to engage. We don't want to ask for help. You need help. You're not that powerful. We need help. You're not that powerful. We need help. But the second is provision of materials. And this is the funding model we're going to discuss. Remember we discussed that in the first class that if you study the scriptures, the scripture is big on abstracts. And then the scripture is also big on concretes. And in this instance, there are a lot of things to say about Moses. By the way, Moses is one of the 66. But today we're looking at how did Moses fund his vision? How did he fund it? How did he fund the vision? 
So how he founded it is verse 35, verse 4 of Exodus. And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring. Many times, the vision you have, you can't fund it alone. It is you insisting on funding it alone that is limiting you. Sometimes, if we insist on funding it alone, we are limited. Because you are waiting for the day you have 10 billion so that you can do it. You're waiting till you have 100 million so that you can do it. But you have built social capitals that can help you. You have friends that can help. And this is very, because I've asked God by the message of God. I'm not going to teach what I'm not doing. And so some of the things I'm saying in these trainings are things I've done with a considerable degree of success. Or at least mild signs that show me that this is working. So if I continue to give myself to it, that it will work. I, I started, I became independent at a very early age. I think I started receiving my first salary at 14, 15. And up to, from that time, made money, lost it, you know, things. So, but that gave me a strong sense of independence. Very hardworking person. But the time came, especially when I started having public interests, public policy goals. I want to visit the IDP camps. I want to visit this place. I am burdened. I want to see what it's like. I want to visit this community. I heard that first nine people were killed. I want to just go and see what it's like for them. Before I talk on the television about these people, I want to see them so that when I'm talking, I'm talking from a pain. I, I want to understand what is happening. I want to travel to Plato. I want to travel to Benue. I want to travel to Nasarawa. But then my business, I keep pulling money out of the business. At a point, it became known to me that my business alone and businesses can no longer fund my dreams. Therefore, I have to ask the people. But it was quite difficult because I, I felt shy. I felt so sometimes you have the decision to choose between your ego and the vision. Sometimes both of them can't stay. Imagine if Moses came down and said, I don't want to ask them, let it not be like I'm, I'm, I'm. let it not be like I don't know, let me let it not be like some of the visions you have, you may have to politely ask for help. You may have to politely ask the people. You may have to ask, politely crowdfund. Like there's one of us here. I wasn't shy about it. I mentioned, look, I have recruited new associates, but we need more laptops because of the work we're doing. We need more laptops. And I said, can you, since there's this laptop I have, a second laptop I have, I'm no longer using it. I said, could you please send it to us? He said, by all, with all pleasure. Now, I could be the man of the Chiba Christ, and I could be the Galadima and decide not to ask so that I can retain my dignity. And I'm looking for the day I will save up money to buy. Now, I can still save up to buy. But then, I'm delaying the work because I'm waiting to save up. So, what are the vision and the things you could do today, tomorrow, next year, that you don't want to ask people? Moses asked politely, politely. Whoever is of a willing heart, give. So the first is that you go to a mountaintop, you receive a vision, and sometimes to fund that vision, you have to politely ask. That asking might be in terms of issuing bonds, issuing for government. It might be in terms of issuing instruments, paper, uh, financial instruments. It might even be like the Imo Airport, San Bakwe Airport. How was it built? Crowdfunding. The man told he was a leader. Of course, he went to a mountaintop, and he told the people, we need an airport. This is why we need an airport. And we men, market women, were donating five naira, ten naira. That was how they built an airport. How was the South is rebuilt quickly after the war? Crowdfunding. Town unions. People were going, rebuilding primary schools, rebuilding secondary schools, rebuilding libraries, rebuilding hospitals, contributing money. Review, go to your villages and see the civic centers in the villages for those who are from the east. Those town halls centers, civic centers, in fact, they crowdfunded to build roads, to pave roads. Every Christmas, they crowdfund the umunna, the collective. 
is a funding model that our government is overlooking. And because of that, they are going into debt. A lot of the businesses that we're starting suffer unduly. It's a new business and you're taking out a loan of $5 million. And you're paying interest on a business that is not yet bringing in money. Whereas, if you had situated yourself properly, you could have crowdfunded $1 million or two. Because the politician doesn't want to ask, he now goes to enter into unstrange relationships with godfathers, just so you can raise money for the campaign, tell the people to cry for people who did it. Many governments cannot ask their people to donate. We want to build a road, bring in your money. But they can go to China to borrow, they can go to IMF, they can go to World Bank. And today, Nigeria is spending hugely to service debts and is crippling. But you can't don't just tell people to give you and they give. You must do something before you tell people to give. Now, who is the kind of leader that people will give to? Moses. What did Moses do? First, these were slaves. He worked hard to secure their freedom. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down. Shaking together and running over. But you have leaders in developing countries who want to take, 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 take. So before a leader, so I'm talking to people here who will find themselves in positions of responsibility. Your citizens can fund your most ambitious projects. Nigerians can raise money for the Nigerian government much more than we can get at the IMF. But you must first give to the people. Give. Moses gave them their liberty. These were slaves being flogged. You know their story. He worked so hard to secure their freedom. Worked so hard. I think when the story is told, you will see of what God did. He did this. But you will not see the sacrifices Moses made in partnership with God to bring these people out. The pain that man went through. A leader who puts his people first. Don't just come and tell them to give. So what our leaders do is on the first day of assuming office, they raise the idea. They want to tax everybody to death. You have not even given them anything. Nothing. You don't care about the businesses. You want to raise IGR. You don't care about the economy. You want to raise IGR. You don't want to talk to the marketers. What can I do for you? They say we need roads. You build for them. We need this policy. Change it. Customs is against us. Change. What do you, how can I help you do it better? You made 10 million last month. How can I increase it to 50? Two government policies. And you do the government policies that will deliver prosperity to the people. And you can now turn back and say, we need to build an airport. This is why we need an airport. We need to build a railway. This is why we need a railway. We need to do this. This is why we need to do it. Who can give us crowdfund? And when I'm telling you, it's not as if we did it in the, Sam Bakwe did it. But it's a leader that people can trust. You can't just assume office without any credibility. You can't steal your way into office and expect people to give you. They're looking at you. You can't come on the first day you announce hardship. You are multiplying misery. Oh, you were a slave. Now, now, I'll double your slavery. And you expect them to give. No. Deliver prosperity to the people. But it is difficult to deliver prosperity to the people because they are not interested in the people. Therefore, it's easier for them to run to China, to run to IMF, to run to World Bank. Some of us here will have opportunities at governance. If you can deliver to the people, you can ask them and they will give you even their last card. It's not just with Moses. They were giving, giving, give, until it became too much that Moses has to now enact a new law. Say, don't give again. Don't give. Don't give again. Stop. Stop. We have too much. Stop. 
These were guys who were slaves a few months ago. Not only did they secure their freedom, remember that when they left, they left it good. Remember that they saw the Red Sea, they crossed it. Remember that they were hungry, manna. Remember that they were thirsty, water. Today, Nigerians are thirsty. The government cannot provide water. And you're telling, you can't tell them to give, they won't give you. Today, Nigerians are hungry. The government cannot produce results. That kind of government will not receive help from the people. Today, Nigerians are facing existential threats in the hands of Boko Haram, in the hands of militants, in the hands of terrorists. The government is not interested. So Nigerians, as they are seeing Egyptians charging at them, our government cannot point towards the Red Sea for it to divide. Instead, every day, 49 killed, 50 killed, 30 killed. The government is not doing anything. How can this government receive help from the people? That's why they run to China. They can't talk to their people. That's also the same thing at a personal level. If you're not interested in people's welfare, you don't care about your friends, you don't care about your family members, you are less affair cavalier about life. And now it's time for you to start business. You want to call them. You don't have goodwill, there's nothing. You don't have anything in the emotional bank account. That you can ask people, I'm trying to be, there are people that, that that's when they, the people will go out of their way to help them. Even when they can't help you, they are feeling so uneasy about it. There are people when they ask you for help, you genuinely want to, even if you don't have, Kai, you just. There are people you know today, you met them, maybe as a hotel receptionist, the way they treated you. You are waiting. If this business I'm thinking about clicks, I'll come and take this girl. If this thing I'm, I'm thinking clicks, I'll come and pick this. This guy is just good. Now, those kind of people you have those thoughts towards, they already have jobs waiting for them in the future. But there are some hotel receptionists. <laughs> if you ever see them near your company, or you ever sit in an interview and they ever cross there, that you no know interview, just go, madam, go, just go. Have some things in emotional bank accounts, deposits, invest in people, not manipulatively. Genuinely care for people. Be that person that people want to help. That's even if when they can't help you, they feel bad about it. Be that person that attracts favor. So that when you have vision, when you have goals, when you have dreams, when you want to run for office, people can give you. When you want to do a movie, people can give you. When you need a laptop, people can give you. When you need this, people can give you. But you have given them something. The way you make them feel around you, the way you are genuinely interested, you might not have everything to give them, but when you come to the house, you clean up the house. There are people, when you come to squats with people, for instance, you're, you're going to stay with an auntie for two weeks. There's a kind of giving you will give. They will be, they will, there's a kind of, but you come in, you wake up by nine, you're pressing your phone in someone else's house. Talk. You're squatting in someone's house. You're, you don't contribute anything. Even if it is bread, buy. Even if you can't buy food, clean the house. Even if you can't clean, just wash the place. But there are some people. They are squatting in your own house, so, but their attitude, you are just waiting for an opportunity to kick them out. When they say clearly, oh, I'm coming to Lagos, say, I traveled, I you know I'm, I'm, some people are in my house, I, you know, my, I, 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 you give them reasons. Now, because you don't have something in the emotional bank account, it will mean that when next you travel, you must provide 45,000 or 35,000 naira for, for hotel rooms. Because the friend you could have slept in their place for five nights or six nights, you did not deposit something enough. And therefore, you now need to pay out of pocket. So if you find yourself paying for everything out of pocket, you take an audit of everything in your life now, and everything in your life is out of pocket, 
then you're not like Moses. Moses is telling you something. Reversed in people, be intentional. Take an audit of your life. Everything you have, your phone, out of pockets, your clothes, out of pockets, your club, everything out of pockets. Now, I'm not talking about people who have entitlement mentality, who have beggarly mentality. I'm not talking about those who are entitled, who are so lazy. No, that's not what we're talking about. But we're saying that there is an aspect of your life that people should genuinely want to do you good. That people should want to recommend you. That people should want to introduce you. That people should want to refer you. Oh, my friend Alice, I, 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 someone, I met someone at a conference. You need to speak with him. There's this guy I met while I was in Italy. You need to speak with him. Kai, Kai, uh, this thing you are doing, let me, let me send you. Have you talked? Do you know this man? He says, no, I don't. Talk, talk with him. That people want to introduce you. People want to refer you. People want to help you. Without that help, if you are struggling on your own, how much can you make on your own? How much impact can you make on your own? That's why many people abandon their dreams, abandon their visions, abandon their goals, and settle. Because they've seen that they can't fund it alone, but they are not that kind of people that people can help. As a matter of fact, your next job is only one recommendation away. Only one recommendation. Who loves you matters. Only one recommendation away. Only one recommendation. There are people that have recommended me for things. There are places I've gone to on my own. It may take me 10 years. But I just got a recommendation. There are others too I have recommended for jobs. No interview, they just got it. On the strength of my recommendation. There are, I have also been a recipient of such favor. Hey, Chima, this thing you are doing, you need help. You need help. Do you know this man? No, I don't know him. He will be interested in you. Call him. Tell him that I sent you his number. I call Chief. Chief, my name is uh, this person. Said, well, let us see. And then we discuss. Maybe they won't give you. And then after a while, be that person that people want to help. Our leaders, Africa can raise, the kind, Nigeria can raise the budget. If Nigerians believe in you, they can fund the entire government. If Nigerians believe in you as a president and you're not using their money to buy private jets and you're not using their money to, to fly first class, you're not using their money to do frivolities and they see that there's a genuine need and that you're interested in them, Again, we are painting a picture of a new Africa. You will see it happen in our time. Where people in the society are actively contributing to the government. Actively raising money to build new airports. Actively raising money to build new hospitals. Actively raising money to build new infrastructure, build new roads. The era of borrowing should be gone. You borrow because you don't have social capital. That's why Tinubu is running around. He keeps, he, if he runs a government for eight years, believe me, he will borrow for eight years. Don't be like him. We're calling names. Yes. Going to IMF, going to World Bank, going to China, because you can't talk to your people. A new set of leadership is emerging. People who don't just know how to win elections, but who need to cast the vision to tell the people, I've been to the mountain top, and this is my vision for Nigeria. This is my vision for Kenya. But we need your help. Now, it is not only in giving money. People donated their time to build some Bagui airport. Because the architect may donate his skills. The plumber will say, I am supposed to be paid 15 naira, but if you can give me 5 naira, I'll do it. The big players will come, volunteers. Now I'm telling you, for those of us who are going to be running companies, 
especially at the early stage of your company, you may not be able to pay people what they want. Therefore, you must have be that company that attracts volunteers. The people come in to volunteer because they know what they can. They, 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 yes, you're giving them exposure, you're giving them training, you're giving... It is because of our views that the volunteer culture has died. And today, businesses are struggling to go to bank, to raise money, to, do, to pay salary. If Nigeria is borrowing money to pay salary. Companies are borrowing money to pay salary. It's because of abuse. Abuse of people. People come in to volunteer to intern in your organization. You're abusing them. You're not interested. You just want to build your criminal empire. Why would they? So people just say, I'm not volunteering again. But I encourage people here, begin to volunteer. Find credible individuals. Find companies. If you want to go into movie making, find people who are into movie making. Volunteer. You may not be paid, but you will gain valuable skills. Contact. You know how it is done. And there is something about staying around people who are doing something that that thing becomes easier. Do you know for me, it is easy for me to believe. Now, some of the things I believe is, so yes, you go to God. But some of the things I, the kind of inherent faith capacity I have is as a result of the people I've been around. I've volunteered for a lot of campaigns. It's easy for me to say I'm running for office. Because I've seen how it is done. How do you become a president? Just want to become. You start telling, okay, okay, I want to become a president. Tell look for I want to become a president. Call for meeting, I want to become a president. I'm like, play like play, the person becomes a president. It's no more rocket science to me. Now, for some of us who have not been that in that room, it might look like a rocket science. I've seen people, ordinary people like you and I, just, I want to go for state house. Like play like play, they're, they're there. But if you are not around them, the process will look so complicated to you. If you intend, for instance, you want to make a movie, the process might seem so complicated. If you intend for someone who is a movie maker, and you see, ah, it just costs people, costs people. That thing that is no longer like a rocket science to you, that thing is value. They might not pay you, but now you believe you can do it. That belief in itself, you can't buy it for 10 million. The kind of belief I have now about some of the things I'm doing and some of the things I will yet do. If you paid me one, one million per month, I will not be able to afford that kind of belief. That's what internship does. But you have to be that person that attracts interns. People genuinely wanting to help you. Genuinely wanting to help support your vision. To support your goal because your vision is their vision. They see themselves as part of it. They stand to benefit from it. Not when it clicks, it will just be you building yourself. You don't care about people. And some of us have worked with such bosses. They just want to fulfill their bottom line. They just want to meet their targets. And they can abuse you, insult you, malign you, just so that they can meet their targets. No interest in your development whatsoever. No interest in your welfare. I speak about governments, I speak about individuals. There are governments like that. You can build companies. Don't wait till you... Okay, what is the minimum wage? What is the, the kind of company you want to build now? You may need to be paying people 100000 per month. And you need like five people. That's 500000 And you multiply 500000 per month by 12 months in a year. And you say, I can't afford to pay salaries. Therefore, the vision will die. If you become that kind of person, people can say, just give me 20000 for my transport. I'll do it. Just to take care of my condition, I'll do it. Some people can say, don't pay us, just let us be going. If this thing works, it's work for all of us. Moses demand the vision and the provision. Every vision God gives, he makes a provision, a poor provision for. If he gives you an idea, the moment you are receiving the idea, another person is receiving the technical competence to execute. If, if, if at all you go to the mountain top, except you've not been there, and I encourage you to be there, if you go to the mountain top to receive vision, you have this vision to build this new company, 
to do this, to start this NGO, another person at that very instant is receiving the empowerment. God is not the author of confusion. He can't send you on an assignment and deny you provision. No, that's not the way it works. Moses has not even gotten down from the mountain. God is telling him, build this, build. read Exodus chapter 30, 31, read all the conversations he had with God on the mountain. And you see, God was telling him, you must build according to pattern. This is the exact specific. He even gives him measurements, measurements, giving exact specification. But this man is not an architect. This man is not a welder. But before that, he says, I have gifted Oholiab and I have put my spirit in them to execute this vision. I have put my zeal in them. So if you are going to run for office, God will put zeal in people who will help you achieve it. If you are going to build a company, God will build, put zeal in people who can help you achieve it. If you are going to start up a business, God will put zeal. Then you may have to learn how to connect with those people. But if you don't think you need men, you want to do it alone, as Galadima, it won't work. Some of the goals we have, you can't do it alone. Imagine what Mr. Peter B did last election, and he will do by the mercies of God better the next time. That he wanted to fund all the things he did. He wanted to print all the t-shirts, wanted to print all the posters, wanted to do all wanted to, even some of us that went about knocking on doors, convincing our friends, doing things, there was a man that you supported, you want, because you saw that in his vision is your vision. You saw that if this man achieves this, I will benefit from it. So you went about convincing people, calling people, telling people, go and vote, telling people, go and obtain, some of us even, went, some of you even went and obtained PVCs for the first time. Become that man that people want to help. Become that woman that people want to help. If God gives you a vision, he makes provision. He provides in terms of good. But this good may be in the hands of investors. They need to like you. Not what appearance. You need to convince them. There are people, once you convince them on your ideas, they can give you money to start it. Once they are sold on the vision, they can invest can invest. And sometimes it seems like it that the children of the underworld understand this better, that they are able to raise seed capital, they are able to raise funds. Some of us are waiting till we have 100 million to start up. Others are pitching their ideas. They just do a pilot, a pilot to show that this business idea is viable. And once they do a pilot, they document the resources, the, the progress, do the market analysis, the projections, and they start pitching to investors. Some of the business ideas you have now, do a small pilot, do a small test run, show that it can work. Document it. Learn how to pitch to investors. Learn how to pitch to people. It's easier to pitch to people and get the funds than to delay your vision by 10 years. To pitch your business idea to investors, to pitch your humanitarian efforts. Sometimes what I do is I want to go to maybe middle bout. I don't do it publicly, I do it privately. But the time will come when it will be safe enough. Say that a community has been attacked and killed. I can now write to people because I, I want to go genuinely and I have this genuine passion for people who are hurting. And they write, I'm going to the middle belt. This is the goals I'm going to accomplish in the middle belt. It's going to cost me X, Y, Z amount of money to go to the middle belt. Could you please help finance it? He I don't have all, I can give you this, I can give you that, I can give you that. I may not risk all, then I can pull some money from my business, add it to what I got from the people, and I've gone to the middle belt. If I wait for the day, I will be able to have the money enough to go. Then problems. Sometimes he says, oh, you're coming to my city, no, I'm going to give you a hotel free. I've slept in hotels I didn't pay for. Now, if I'm waiting to pay for 35k per night, 40k per night too, I may not, I may be pushed. So sometimes you keep procrastinating your vision because you don't want to leverage people. And sometimes it's out of ego. Let it not be that I'm asking people. And you sacrifice your vision because of your small ego. I don't want to beg. I, I don't want, I'm not, I can't ask for help. I cannot do it. 
I, I am all sufficient. You are not. Moses was not all sufficient. Moses was not all sufficient. David was not. This is the same way they built the temple. David, go, go, uh, we can, I can give you the scriptural references. David donated, you know Solomon built the temple, but Moses, David raised almost all the money needed. David donated massively, and the children of Israel donated. But before they donated, Moses got them freedom. Moses prospered the kingdom. The army that were fighting on the side of Moses, they all became more time millionaires. Everybody that was around David became wealthy. And now you tell them, I want to build for God. They can put in their money. Now, some of us are the places we are going to because this class is not just for today. We are planting seeds that we want to harvest 10 years, 15 years. The people around you, I know of politicians, they don't want to have anybody grow. They don't want, they want everybody around them to be OES members, begging them for money. Don't be that kind of person. Give people around you opportunity to grow. If you can recommend them, recommend them. If they can become, give them opportunity, send them to trainings. So that if you want to become, if you have a goal of becoming governor and everybody around you is begging you for money, who will fund your governorship admission? But now if you have 100 people who are 100 strong men, 100 of them can put down 10 million and you raise up. One billion in one day. But if they don't have money, 100 million rather. No, 100 times 10 million. It's one billion. It is. But if you keep having people, so there are people I know have become past governors. They could have recommended people. They could have sent people. They, know, they could have helped people. They are not helping anybody. But today they are running for office. Higher office. But there is nobody to help them. Not David. You know all those people they talked about, strong men of David, that were beggars? All of them were territorial influencers. They go to war, they kill, they, they get spoils of war because then it was legitimate to fight and take over people's territories. They get those spoils of David does not take it alone. All his lieutenants became multi millionaires became more time millionaires. So if he's donating one billion, he has people that can donate 500 million. Be that kind of friend. If you ever make money before your friends, if you give them the code, code, give them the code. Plug them in. You are better off having richer friends than poorer people. Because the next level that you want to will require some form of strong men. Assuming today that the government freezes your account and they have frozen accounts of people before, do you have men around you that can? No, don't worry about that. Be going. On my birthday, I wanted to give out a large sum of money to support a project, not my project, another project, but I felt like supporting that project, let it be my birthday gift. And I called my friend. I said, this is what I'm going to do. I want you to support it. In less than five minutes, five minutes, she sent her support. In the millions, this was a girl that used to sleep in my sitting room. What did I do? Helped her, trained her, recommended her for a position. Today I have people I can call at my small level. Now if I keep growing, some of you here at, at another level, I could call someone and say, I give that woman 100 million. And they, uh, that's my vision. Go and build an estate for that. Go and build a house for that widow. And my friends, my associates, my, they will do it. If everything you do is something you found out of pocket, there is a problem. Begin to raise men, raise women, raise people around you. That was what David did. And he could tell them, I want to build a temple, bring in the money. 
And when God told him, you are not building, he said, okay, I'm not building, but I'll raise the money for it. He donated, and all the people donated. Moses came down and empowered the people. I said, God gave me a vision. By the time he was empowering the people, he didn't even know that there will be a need to build something. Some of you may not even know that you will run for office in the future. You may not believe it. You may not even believe that some of the things that will happen to you 10, 15, you may not believe it. But you better have something and not need it than need it and not have it. You better have men and don't need them than the day you want to run for office, you look around you, nobody. The day you want to build company, you look around you, nobody. The day you want to start up that business, you look around you, nobody. No, that's not what we want to do. If we are going to achieve territorial impact, we must invest in the people. Invest in people around us. If you can't give money, give training. Buy books for them. Do something. You must give. Some of us can give good advice. Call people. Give them advice. Some of us can do. There's nobody that has nothing to give. If you don't have anything to give, just say, oh, I just want to come and wash the car for you. Find something to give. Give your employer something. Give more than you are paid for. If you're here and you're working for any firm, give them the best of you. Overgive, overwork, overachieve results. I told one about associates who's working for a governor. I said, don't be the person complaining. Everybody's complaining. The governor is not getting it right. Don't be like that person. Once you see something that is not working, write him an email. Say, your excellency, say, this is what I think about this problem. I think that this can help you. Become a problem. He's a governor, but he's in pain. He's in need. And you're around him. Don't be like every other person. Say, no, guys, no, guy. Just say, oh, God. Just write him an email. So, oh, God, I hear that you're going to, to speak at this event. See, 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 these are the talking points. Oh, God, I hear that you're going to, I saw on the uh, social media that you're going to speak at United Nations. These are the talking points. Talk about this, talk about this, talk about this. Over value, provide value. Sometimes it might not be, sometimes go, it might even be news. You are in a sector. You're working for somebody. So, okay, these are the relevant news items you need to see today. And so they don't have to start searching the internet to find the news. By the time you wake up, you read the news item and aggregate ten for people. And say, I have done it for people. Sometimes I take the newspapers, I read them and I cycle. Read page 38, page 35. Page. The li I make his life easy. Before he comes to office, there are several, six newspapers, but you don't have to read all, he doesn't have to start. I circle the ones that are relevant to what he's doing. Find out how you can help your boss, how you can help your superiors, how you can help, how you can add value. Give more than you're taking. Give more. Find out how you can help your friends. What business are you doing? What, how can I help you? Sometimes I call my millionaire friends, what are you trying to do? What help do you need? And they start telling you, sometimes I don't have the help immediately. I go home, I think about it. I think about it. I think about it. Aha, I think this might help you. Start looking for your uncles. Start looking for help. Help them. You know that they are doing this kind of business. Just go and research that business. Don't use your data for TikTok. Go and research the business they are doing. And tell them, sir, see what I saw about this business. You are into manufacturing. I hear that there's a new government policy coming up. And you give him an advice that saves him millions. Invest in people. Governments that invest in people can always come back. Allow people to use you. I hear this thing, I don't want anybody to use me. I don't want anybody to use me. They are not using me, I'm not their slave, and I'm not going to be used. Be used of people. Volunteer, give more than you're taking. If you're an employee here, give value, become valuable. It is not even that company that you're giving that may reward you. Reap, give and it shall be given one to you. It is not the person you give that will give. You may work for John Holt. And there's another company that will get more. There is a law. It's a law. If you give, it will be given unto you. It's a law. 
if you offer value, there's a young person I know, and I've been working now for, I think, is it Bauti State Government or Natural State Government? I don't know, I heard the story. The man that is governor today, he met him as a, as a youth copper. Was interning, was, you know, was just deployed to, I think that the, the time the man was heading a, a parastatal or something, a government agency, either about, I can't remember which state now. And the man was deployed there as a youth copper. And he was the same, so the youth copper was, I believe that he was not the only youth copper there. He helped the man. Like play, like play. The outgoing governor called the man. You are going to be my, 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 you're going to take over from me. Like play, like play. The man won primaries. Like play, like play. The man became governor. That's who one of the first appointments he made. The youth copper. Nobody's asking you for CV. Nobody's asking. No interview, nothing. Is that the only youth copper he has met in his life? No. There are other youth coppers still today looking for employment. There's something from T.D. Jakes. He says, give your very best. Even if it is not it, it will lead to it. If where you are today is not it, if you give your very best, that place will lead to it. Give your very best where you are currently. Even if it is not it, it will lead to it somehow. Might even be people you met there, might at least somehow. If governments learn to deliver value to the people, you go to a market, your first instinct is not to tax them. You ask them, how can I help you? They say, we are suffering from bad roads. You give them roads. They say, how can I help you again? We are suffering from fire. You give them fire trucks. Say, so how can I help you? They say, this, this, we have problems with customs. And the governor goes and negotiates with customs. I say, what is happening? And the governor takes their problem to the president and continues to fight until that problem is solved. If you deliver value, after a while, you can come back to the business community. And you tell them, I want to build 10 new hospitals. One more person there can build one for you. You tell them, I want to do 365 primary health care centers. You can, there are millionaires in your state. Each one can take health centers, do it for, turn it around. All you have to do is to give them a template. Like in my states, I know the number of health care centers they have in my states. Now, some of them are not primary health care, some of them does not qualify, but yes. If a governor delivers value, Consistently for two years, the governor can raise millionaires that can totally transform those healthcare centers without spending from the government purse. How many secondary schools are there in the state? The governor can raise social capital. He can use social capital to transform all the secondary schools in the state. Through social capital, a governor can use it to transform all the... Just give them a template. I see the budget. I saw the budget for my state last year. I saw how much they are budgeting to give every secondary school. That's the budget. It was not released eventually. But that's the budget. Hmm. I'm saying. The people, the, I looked at the, com the schools in my, my community. <laughs> I laughed. Oh God, if you are, if the, the billionaires in my community will take all these secondary schools and transform it. But you need to be that man that they can invest in. The millionaires in my community, they can take all this, they can, or God, just to use your money to do other things. Don't leave this while, let's just deal with it. At the governmental level, yes. At also the personal level, yes. I will stop here and ask the question, what have we learned from today's class? How do you intend to implement this? Incorporate it into what you're currently doing. That's the question that I want to pose to people here. What we have discussed now, how do you intend to incorporate it into your, how can you in, incorporate this into what you're doing? And I'll be happy to receive your feedback. Um, Victor, Victor, your hand was first raised. Yes, Victor, go ahead, please. Thank you so much for tonight's session. If I am to 
summarize everything you just said, it is networking and volunteering as a tool to achieve greater height. Because you have to network, meet people, and then invest in them. Really give, if there is something everybody must give. You have some, even if you are poor or broke, give your service, give. You can also give recommendations. Yeah, there are many things you can give. And at the same time, when you are giving something to people, at the same time, you're also building something for yourself. And sometimes you, are, you might not even see what you are doing. But it is time for you to go for something, for you to work on something. Those people you helped will still come back to, in a way, to thank you for being part of my journey. Thank you for helping me do that. Or thank you for serving me. They can even give you recommendation. So in everything, in some way, just, just about networking and volunteering. And then at the, and at the same time, the team will still come back to you. This is what I learned this night. Thank you so, thank you so much, Jeremiah. I appreciate that. Exactly. In fact, it's just now that you're saying this. I remember one of the countries I visited, um, I think last year or so. I walked into the embassy in less than three hours because I did not have I same day visa, same day, because of who recommended me. Same day. Same day, walked in, everything happened same day. In fact, they were telling me, when do you want to come? When are you free? I said, I don't live in Abuja. When are you coming? I say, I am traveling to this place, traveling to this place, so I will go through Abuja, but I can only stay for one day in Abuja. I said, come in. I came in, people were on the queue, they fast tracked me, brought us to this thing, served us to this, 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 this. Just capture the details, did this, this, this. I said, can I go now? They said, wait. I waited. And to, lo and behold, these are countries men spend years trying to get visa to. What did I do? I was just serving someone. Now, if I want to start building my capacity to travel to such places, I can still get it, but it will take a longer route. Fly on the wings of men. But don't go manipulatively trying to get from them. Trying to... Everybody that meets people, they want to get, they want to get. Give, 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 give. Keep giving, keep giving. In fact, as an example, this year we are giving until there's nothing more to give. After these 32 days of governance, we are doing 32 schools, secondary schools, projects. Selected 32 secondary schools, free civic training for the teachers first and then the students. We are doing 32 public institutions and they are not funded by anybody. In fact, the 32 days of governance we are doing today, by the time we finished, we must have spent between 5.2 million to 6.7 million to do this class. The only funding support we've gotten is 50,000 that one of the participants sent me to buy internet router. Every other thing out of pocket. Give, we give, give, give. I've seen it work for me. And you might think I'm being foolish. And people have said, it works for me. Some of the places I've been to today, some of the places I've gone to, my internet, my qualification nowhere near. I have never in my life applied for any job. Never for one day. Just people just recommend, give, 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 give. Today we're helping state governors, state governments. I write public proposals, I give to you free, implement that, help your people. I'm going to meet another governor. I'm thinking seven public policy proposals, I'm going to dash this man. As a consultant, you pay in the millions to get that kind of work. I write it for you, give it out. There are some lawmakers, I've written the bills, give them sponsor, take. I don't want money, take, just give. Lawmakers in the House of Representatives, you see them reading motions, I wrote it. Give, without pay, don't pay, just what will I Don't worry, honorable, just take. Don't worry, it's this thing, just take, take. What do you want to take? I don't want anything to take. 
We are going to be training 32 public institutions. Yet this year, by the message of God, 32 public institutions. We are selecting 32 institutions to begin to train the civil servants. And many of these institutions will be local governments. 32 local governments. And more than likely, these are local governments that can't afford it. We are giving, training, free trainings. Just keep giving. Keep giving. Yet again, we are going to support 32 candidates. I've, one of them is already here. 32 candidates running for local government. Free consultancy. Free, tra free, free consultancy. 32. Why is it 32, 32, 32? Nothing, just because I'm 32 years. Just, just, that's just the number. If I was 33, I would have, that's just it. That's it. You give. Now, some of the trains are going to be delivered virtually, so I'm not tra traveling. There's some of the places, if I'm visiting like Abuja to do a business in Abuja, I can block out two nights to just give you guys something, and, and out of there, but I've given. So that trip, I'm, I have it's a business trip for me, but as part of the business trip, I can just give you guys something. If I'm traveling to Lagos, I can just give. If I'm traveling to the East, I can just give. It's giving, giving. Now, keep watching this space. You will see when these things we are giving will begin to come back. It's a law of nature. I learned this at a very early age and it has helped. There's nobody I worked with that did not cry the day I was telling them I'm leaving. Nobody. I said, oh God, I'm leaving. It's now time for me to leave. They, they say, Z, what is it? I said, no, it's time for me to leave. There's not one person I've ever worked with that agreed to release me there are people that are unfireable. You can't fire us. In fact, one of them, I met him at a, as a volunteer in a governorship campaign. He lost the governorship. He says, you, I need you. He created an office, created just something just to retain my services. When I told him I was going, he frowned. He fired. He worried for a little while. That's today. If I'm to start life again, I'll begin again to give. By the time I give for 10 years, you see the results. Some of the government houses that are open to us today, we don't ask for contracts, we know nothing. And they are shocked. They are shocked. You mean you left your state, came to our state, did all this research work, and you're giving us recommendations, and you're not charging us. They are shocked. Completely. And sometimes when we do some maybe it's, maybe there is a person funding them. Yes, God in heaven is funding us. I'm sharing this, I'm being this detailed to encourage us to give. Give your very best. At your workplace, give more. If they're paying you 100 k deliver value of 100 million. Deliver value. Help your bosses. Help them. Help them. Find their pain points, address it, not manipulatively, not in a way that don't even expect anything, just be given, just be given. It's a law, it's a law, it can't fail. Just be sowing your seeds, it will grow in time. Yes, Peter, how do you intend to implement? Thank you very much. Uh, so for me also in my place of work is the fact that I just want to add to this notion to this call or this class. You see this this is thing we usually call say Nigeria, we say that people have connection and all that. I think it's just a betrayal of that word in the real sense. Just like you said, if you're not building capacity not impacting, if you're not creating value, if you're not making yourself a valuable, a valuable dispense of people, then this same connection will always be far away from you. Now, for someone who's going to view you from afar, now who always think, oh, you have that connection, because I've been rubbing minds with people in government, thinking maybe you are soiling your hands in death and all that. But in reality, is they are not seeing the inherent work that you've been doing, which is capacity building. Is part of the things that are lacking here. I'll just quickly use one example. This is why I currently work. I got that based on recommendation. In 
fact, I was in Nigeria, the person who recommended me was not seen till this day, till this day, face to face. Not seen. I was just in his class, registered in his class, and I think I, something happened in class, and I was just natural with myself. There was no point hiding who, who, who I was. My name was called continuously again here. And eventually when I woke up, he asked, what happened? And I just went straight to the point. I was being truthful, I was being honest, I was being pragmatic with the whole thing. That was the, that was, that was the beginning of the likeness. And you go know, from class to do this, to do that, and all that. And the attitude came to bear. And before you know it, this is where I am. And courtesy of this same place, I've been getting other places as well. So I think what is really lacking with most of us is that, that we're not ready to build capacity. And many of us are not ready to serve so that we can. The reality is for everything that you do for free, for every form of internship that we do, for every form of service that you do right now, it's that invaluable currency you successfully created for the future. All right, let me just stop here so I don't um, say more than that. Thank you so much, sir. You reminded me of one of the times I was visiting my home state and then I made a call. I said, I'm, I want to see the SSG. And the person I called said, Give me a couple of hours. And then eventually they called me, the man is in the office, and you can come. So I went there, I sat down, I waited for him. He was trying to see me. I said, Your Excellency, Your Honor, I've come to check up on the SS panel report. Now, to tell you this, I have never been assaulted by police officers before. Never. I will never be because I've cracked the code out of my parents. I don't know anybody personally who has been, apart from the fact that I had stories of people. But I take my time to bump, to bother him. We even worked so hard, worked so hard, eventually smuggled something into the budget, has not been released on NSAS to make sure that we secure the funding for SAS victims. We've been working on that for nearly two years. Now the day to find, then I hear again that the state appointed another panel to look into something similar. I quickly wrote my recommendation to that panel. I've been following up, hey, where are we on this? I've been following up, Ministry of Budget, where are we on this? I say it's now in the budget. I said, don't talk, let it be in the budget, finally. Let it be that it was not implemented, but let, let's, let's put it there. But eventually we'll get to the point that we have put it there and it was implemented. And the day we secure that funding, you will not see me there. The people will not even know who did that for them. I've told you, by 2025, God gives us the grace. There are two, there are laws we're working on. If we finish this law and it passes, 280 billion in additional funding for our primary schools. To it now, I may not be able to pay school fees for children, but I've seen a law that if I change it, it will give them 280 billion. Now, I may not even be the governor that will implement that law. Now, the governors will have more money. They may not even need to know where it come, came from. But there is, a, there is a law that we are applying. There is a God in heaven that is taking notes. And so many times, don't do this for people to see it. Don't publicize it. I'm saying this here. It's a closed meeting to encourage others. Yes, I see more hands up. How are you going to implement this? Yeah, it was Jeremiah and James. Jeremiah, you first, and after you, James, and then we wrap up the class. Okay, good evening, <coughs> Mr. Chima. Good evening, sir. Thanks again for, for another insightful session. Sorry, I couldn't unmute my mic earlier. I stepped away from my phone for a little bit. So I was hearing you call me. So my, my takeaways from today's session and, and, and maybe an, an extra layer to it is um, the need to cultivate um, <coughs> relationships without expectation to, to a certain extent. Because um, when people think networking, most of the time they think, or oh, those that have gone ahead of us, <coughs> those that have gone ahead, that uh, whose who's connections they can maybe leverage or something. And in doing that, they forget about those who are, are also at their, their level too. Um, Peter Obi was once someone's classmate. Okay? Um, uh, everyone <laughs> that we see in some high position in society right now was once someone's peer. And people, 
right now are like, okay, um, to get ahead, I should be networking with the digital piece of society. But they forget that their classmates also have the tendency to become those other great people in the future. So I, I think um, nurturing your relationships without the expectation is something that people overlook in the sense that they are looking at those who can help them presently, forgetting that even within their present cycle, there are people that might not help you now, but the seeds you are sowing will eventually bring yield fruits. Maybe not now, maybe not even for yourself, for your children. For instance, um, I recently had to stay in a place I've not really been to before, and I was hosted for two weeks off of friendships that my father cultivated in the university. Okay. Um, and as it is, it's not like right now. But yes, that happened. So yes, you never know when these things will be different. Then another thing is that which rewards others rewards you too. So for instance, um, David, who we spoke about in this class, when he was uh, before, before he even um, became, um, when I say, a fugitive running away from Saul, he was actually one of Saul's lieutenants. And in that time, he would go up on his own, do raids that no one had sent him to do, and all that, you know. And in that time, he was building capacity, and at the same time, he was also uh, increasing the dominion of Saul, so to speak. So, um, on the surface, it might not have looked like he was gaining anything. Personally, but he was building capacity, and those are the things that ended up making him the mighty man of work that he became. And throughout his reign, he didn't lose a single battle. So, yeah, um, basically, these two things um, cultivating without cultivating relationships without expectation of reward, and realizing that that's what you do to reward others. It's, it's like the example that you gave the other night about the student that was told to push the mountain. That is how giving is sometimes. Like you pour yourself out so much and you don't see any return. But then it is building your muscles, you're pushing against your muscles, the mountain is building your muscles. So yes, the rewards might not be tangible now, but they are there and they are accumulated. Uh, and yeah, and another thing also was that of appearances. I, I never really said that but before. Like, yes, we know you are addressed by the way you dress, but then you know. That's being stated explicitly, you know, men judge by appearance. You know, I never saw it that way. So that was also a perspective shift for me. So, yeah, thanks again for the wonderful class. God bless. God bless you too, sir. I'm grateful. Yes, Mr. James, go ahead, please. And then after you, there are other people. AVM is here. Yeah. Thank you once more, Mr. Chairman, for the teachings today, sir. I've been reinforced and I'm being encouraged to continue to actually. Most of the things that he said here. But the two striking things for me are networking and volunteering or service. And um, I'm, I'm working on my networking capacity, especially my social and uh, in terms of interacting with people. But volunteering, I've been keen on that and I've been applying it. And I realize that um, volunteering can actually break the corridors of power. From what I'm applying currently. Um, in my home from where I live in Potter Court, um, there was an issue of um, people, the tenants not, um, an individual collecting the Nepal bill, the Nepal payments, and at the same time, the person was squandering the money without actually documenting how he collected the money. It wasn't accountable. No presentation of how the money came in and how the money is going out. So I took it upon myself when we discovered the lapses from him. I called one other guy, then we deliberated on it, then called the meeting. From the meeting, I volunteered, okay, and I'll be taking the Nepal day. And from there, I was able to collect the money from every tenant and show them an example of how to be accountable. So I put it out the money that everybody that I received in my account, a separate account for receiving the money. So um, what I saw there was that 
since um, I collected it for like four months, and the accountability was there. Everything, how the money came in, and how I made the payment. And with that, I discovered that I was able to buy the minds of other tenants, and I was able to organize them for a meeting. I was packed in like um, a year ago, and I'm and some have lived more than five years, and I'm the one taking charge of the whole compound. And it even got to a point that the landlord of our compound had, um, when we had a chance to do the sum of it. So it was me that the landlord assigned the game. So it brought about a relationship between me and the landlord, and this kind of trust and accountability that it is possible for transparency to actually occur in the compound. So I realized that volunteering itself can actually bring you to a corridor of power if you actually implement it correctly. Thank you so very much, sir. There is a comment in the session. I'll read it, but um, I want to introduce my big ogre, very big ogre. Um, I'm not sure he would want me to properly introduce him, but then the next person that's about to speak is my very big ogre. I say very, very big ogre. I'll leave it at that. So, yes, you have the floor, sir. Oh, okay, thank you, class. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes, sir, we can all hear you, sir. Yeah. 
I feel so good and later. Thank you so very much, sir. I mean, participants of the class, you from what the, what you say, you see that he's a high level functionary of the government, a high level functionary of the government, and he's way way um, uh, established in life, way way accomplished um, in his career before he even entered the government, and he's here uh, to offer encouragement. Um, one of the days we will host him and then um, I will not be teaching, he will be teaching the class. Of course, I have not discussed with him privately on this, but I am now dragging him out publicly. So, raise your hands and then show with the show of an emoji. How many of you want to receive him to come and teach one of the sessions in Boko School of Government? Uh, you see people are raising their hands and behavior. So, so beautiful. So, that shows you that uh, one of the days uh, we will secure a day that you are free. I know that you are quite a very busy man and that maybe by this time you are tired. But even if we have to buy you coffee, we will we'll send people to bring coffee so that you will be strong enough to teach one of the sessions, sir. Thank you so very much for it. Thank you. Thank you for me, particularly, I took away the issue of building social capital. For instance, the issue of
Africa's morning is at hand. It's here. It's just for us to take it, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm deeply grateful. And AVM has also been sponsoring some of our missions to the Middle Belt quietly, without noise, without pictures. Just write him, says, AVM, this is what I'm doing. And he wires his money. So thank you so much for your all, all the support you've been giving us and for physically attending the classes and the sessions. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, very grateful. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. So, with what ABM has said, I don't know if, if, if we should just close the meeting here or if there's anybody that wants to add one more thing and we will not deny you the platform before we close. Is there anyone like that that wants to recount or tell us how he intends to implement or, what, or she intends to implement what he or she learned? Okay, in the absence of that, um, Giving opens doors that selfishness can't open. There is no government house that is not open to me today. None. Well, I don't need to know anybody there. All I need to do is to have a problem that I want to help them solve. And I can take my time, research their issues, write my recommendation and send them. I don't need to see the governor once I sign my recommendation. Sometimes they invite for a meeting. Sometimes I request for a meeting. I'm not coming to ask for contracts. I'm not coming to take pictures with you. We are not coming to ask for anything. We fund ourselves. We pay all the interventions we did in Bedway States. We didn't take government money. We didn't even receive pure water from them. Not one subject of water. We funded our way through. And when people see, see it, I share with my close friends, I say, what are you doing? It's a government for Christ's sake. This is the, what people are doing and they are getting paid in the millions, in the multiple of millions. You mean you went to government and gave it to them free? Well, we, I tried to explain to make them understand, but it's, it's difficult. I say, if it is me, I now say that is why it's not you. Because if it is you, you will not get the, door, the access to the governor because you'll be asking for money. You will not get the access. So if you put yourself first, many doors will be locked to you. If you put others ahead, places where your less cannot carry you, selflessness will take you there. The quality of friends I have today, the kind of confidence I have that I can... The only government has that is locked to me is the government that, that I don't have interest in. Once I see a genuine problem I want to solve and that your state government is part of the things, I will take my, I will give you. There is yet a meeting in my heart to governor, maybe of my state. I've been thinking, what will I give this man? I've not requested for a meeting yet, but I'm thinking, if I meet him, what will I give him? I'm thinking, I will give him seven core public policy proposals that he can implement, free, design, seven of them. And that I've not requested for a meeting is because the proposals are not ready. So anytime I'm meeting a king, what will I give? What will you give? And we're not giving so that you will win an election or you give us appointment. It's so that the people will be good, things will work well. That's the kind of selflessness we want to see, especially for a generation that has learned to put themselves ahead and stumble and to knock down others to get ahead. We're now rewriting that thing to say that you can be selfless. That thing that tells you that selfishness is what helps you to accomplish your goal. We're beginning to tell you that selflessness helps you accomplish it much more faster, much more genuinely, much more genuinely. The quality of relationships will be solid, solid, much more genuinely, much more genuinely. I tell you, what we have is a more excellent pathway, but we have to model it for our generation, a more excellent pathway. What we are all doing here with that, we will inspire others to do it. I, I like the testimonies that was shared today, and there's one in the comment that I would like to read. 
So one of the easiest ways to build social capital is through giving. That's coming from Mr. Victor Nicolo, which mostly comes from volunteering. Last year, I was able to send out four out-of-school children, kids, through my social capital. And I have also empowered over 500 students I use with digital skills, and I haven't spent a dime paying the tutors. Building social capital will ease some burdens off you. But before then, you need to invest your time and energy in other people's lives, which most youths are not willing to do. Now you ask yourself, what do youths are trying to do? Trying to defraud people, trying to get ahead, trying to... How is that working for us? How is that working? There's a more excellent pathway. He who needs to be great is Jesus who is saying it. You need to be servant of all. But today we want to have positive around people. And we are saying that the lessons from David, the lessons from Moses, is that he who wants to get must first give. Give your all and then it turn. People will reciprocate. The universe will reciprocate. And give without expecting anything in return. Don't give manipulatively. Don't give pretentiously. Um, in fact, the easiest way to receive, I know, let me say this because we are talking about giving. I don't know when this next kind of topic will come. The easiest, the, in fact, there are some givings that you receive instantly. Once you give immediately, you receive instant reward. The fastest, this one does not waste time. Once you give that kind of giving, you receive your reward that very day. Jesus talked about it. He says, when you give, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. If you do that, you have received your reward. Look at what he said. You have received your reward. Your reward. Because you are doing it to be applauded. You have already received it. He also says, when you pray, don't pray in the street corner shouting. He said, that's the fastest prayer God answers. It's not God that answers it. It's man that answers that kind of prayer. Because they will now be calling you a man of prayer. You've gotten your reward. You give and you bring cameras to be there to show that you are giving. You have got the people will, that day you will get a lot of retweets. You have gotten your reward. The best kind is to give without expecting and to give quietly. Keep giving, keep giving, keep giving. One day it will accumulate. Even if it fails to accumulate on that, it will accumulate in life. Thank you so very much. My name is Jim Christian Africa's morning. Thank you.